scientists are worried about this. Will the sun turn into a red giant? Did you know scientists are worried about this? The sun is on the verge of becoming a giant red star. What would our sun look like when it dies? Researchers have made guesses about when our solar system will end and how soon it will come. And people won't be there to witness the end. Astrophysicists used to think it would transform into a planetary nebula, a bright balloon of dust and gas. However, the evidence clearly shows that it had to be much bigger for that to happen. In 2018, a group of astrophysicists from around the world reversed it once more and discovered that a planetary nebula is, in fact, the most likely location where a sun will die. The sun is around 4.6 billion years old. Astronomers believe it will die in about 10 billion years, based on what they have seen about some other stars. There will be additional events along the situation, obviously. The sun will become a red giant in around 5 billion years. The star center will reduce. However, the surface layer will grow until it reaches Mars orbit. It has been hard to figure out what emerges after the red giant. Previous studies have discovered that the first star must be twice as large as the sun to establish a shiny planetary nebula. But the 2018 report used computer simulations to find that, like 90% of many other stars, our sun would most likely reduce from a red giant to a white dwarf and die in a planetary nebula. When a star dies, it ejects a mass of gas and dust known as its envelope into space. The envelope can be as much as half the star's mass. This reveals the star's core, which by this point in the star's life is running out of fuel, eventually turning off and before finally dying," said Albert Zelstra. The data structure anticipates how various kinds of stars will live so that they can sort out how luminous the planetary nebula will be for different star masses. Planetary nebulae are relatively normal in the parts of the universe that can be seen. Some of the most famous ones are the Helix Nebula, the Cat's Eye Nebula, the Ring Nebula, and the Bubble Nebula. Scientists discovered anything strange about the brightest planetary nebulae in these other galaxies nearly 30 years ago. They have roughly the same illumination. This indicates that astrophysicists should be able to figure out how distant apart other galaxies are by staring at their planetary nebulae. The statistics revealed that it was true. However, the models didn't match up, which has confused researchers since the finding was made. Old, low-mass stars should make much fainter planetary nebulae than young, more massive stars. This has become a source of conflict for the past 25 years, said Zielstra. The data said you could get bright planetary nebulae from low-mass stars like the Sun. The model said that was not possible. Anything less than about twice the mass of the Sun would give a planetary nebula too faint to see. This issue has been resolved by the 2018 models, which demonstrate that the Sun is close to the minimum mass for a star that really can make a noticeable nebula. Perhaps a star with less than 1.1 times the Sun's mass can't make a nebula that can be seen. On the opposite hand, the luminous nebulae are created by stars that are up to three times as large as the Sun. This is a nice result. Not only do we now have a way to measure the presence of stars of ages a few billion years in distant galaxies, which is a range that is remarkably difficult to measure, we even have found out what the Sun will do when it dies," Zylstra said. Will the Earth be eaten by the Sun? Well, maybe. Scientists argue about whether or not the Earth will be eaten by the Sun when it becomes a red giant billions of years from now. The future is very sparkling, perhaps even too sparkling. Gradually, the Sun is getting bigger and brighter, and in just a few billion years, it will dry up Earth, abandoning it warm, brown, and unlivable. In around 7.6 billion years, the outer layer of the Sun will be 20% bigger than Earth's orbit presently, and it will be 3,000 times brighter. In the final moment, the Sun will break apart and become a white dwarf. Experts agree regarding what will occur to the Sun but don't agree on what will actually occur to Earth. British mathematician James Jeans initially thought about what would happen to Earth during the red giant phase of the Sun in 1924. Many researchers have come to various conclusions. Our planet doesn't get wiped out in certain situations, but it does in the most recent studies. The result is not straightforward, because even though the Sun will grow bigger than Earth's orbit, or one astronomical unit, this would start losing mass. But Earth must move away from the Sun as gravity pulls weaken with time. Now, at the greatest radius, 1.2 AU, the Sun will still have dropped around a third 
of its mass compared to how heavy it is now. So that Earth might avoid being swallowed up by the Sun, but other things make the evaluation harder to do. Earth will move closer to the Sun if the thin surface layer of the Sun pulls on it. The forces generated by the other planetary systems are even harder to fully explain, which all act on the same shrinking and growing Sun. Earlier this year, two groups used different techniques to figure out that the Sun would eventually eat the Earth. Lorenzo Aureo of Italy's National Institute of Nuclear Physics used perturbation theory to do composition that would excite any university junior learning physics principles. It makes evaluations easier by getting rid of comparatively small aspects. This makes equations of motion that explain how the Sun and Earth affect each other more accessible to work with. Iorio's calculations show that the Earth will travel away from the Sun at around 3 mm per year, or only 0.0002 AU, until the Sun reaches its red giant period. This is based on the assumption that the Sun will continue to lose a tiny amount of mass each year, approximately one part in one trillion. But when that happens, the Sun will grow so big the Earth will be vaporized within a few million years. Iorio's article has been sent to astrophysics and space science, but hasn't been analyzed by other scientists. A few researchers aren't sure if the small amounts that Iorio thinks are true will stay small as the Sun changes. Although, if Iorio's calculation is wrong, he might still have the perfect result. Klaus Peter Schroeder of the University of Guanajuato in Mexico and Robert Smith of the University of Sussex in England came to the same conclusion in an assessment published in the Royal Astronomical Society. They used more accurate Sun models and took tidal interactions into account. As the Sun loses mass and gets bigger, its rotation speed should also slow. This is called the conservation of angular momentum in physics. The Sun's outer layer has a tidal bulge because of its slowed rotation. This bulge's gravity pulls the Earth toward it. Keeping this in mind, scientists have found that any planet whose orbital radius would be less than 1.15 AU will die in the end. Can Earth be secure if anybody stays behind? In a daring article on astronomical engineering, Don Koriansky of the University of California of Santa Cruz and his co-workers have said that moving our Earth to a safer location, such as the orbit of Mars, might take billions of years. But our moon may need to be left apart, and a mistake could mean the end of all life. Of course, more research needs to be done. So that's it for today's video. Do you believe that Earth will be eaten by the Sun? Let us know in the comment section and hit the like button if you liked the video. Subscribe to our channel for more amazing videos like this one. With that, I'm out.